uh, it was one of the most interesting people I've ever met. And uh, was, I consider him one of my best friends. Many of you who knew him would probably say exactly the same thing. He was really smart. Uh, when he, he died of uh, melanoma in 2012, and while he was in hospice, many, many people came by to see him. And also emailed him and uh, sent uh, messages to him. But, but one of the things, one of his long, lifelong friends came by and uh, told me that he, Luke could read a newspaper when he started first grade. He was just a really smart guy. He, uh, they said he was always seen with a book under his arm. He had a huge library that he donated uh, after he passed away to Dave Morrow. Took him uh, almost two U-Haul trucks to, uh, to move it all. But he was very well read. He uh, could talk to anybody about anything. He had an encyclopedic uh, memory for UFO-related uh, instance. Another thing that he did was for about 20 years, he uh, was the editor, co-editor, then editor of the UFO news clipping service. Back before the internet, this was the main way people could find out about UFO sightings. And uh, that was, it was a huge service, and he, he developed uh, correspondence, uh, correspondent with his, his uh, subscribers all over the world. He had a huge list of people that he kept in touch with. set up the Lucius O. Parish Research and Education Trust before he died. And uh, you can go and look at, read about Lou's life and, and the resources that are available there at www.farishtrust.org. Or you can email me at trustee at farishtrust.org. Uh, basically, the four things the trust was set up to do was to provide many grants of $500 to $5,000 for people who needed uh, seed money to uh, do things related to UFO research and education. Uh, it might be analyzing a white powder found in a crop circle, uh, analyzing tree ring uh, uh, right uh, near where uh, a famous uh, UFO sighting took place. Uh, those types of things it might involve uh, camera equipment, night vision equipment for people who are doing research. So a wide variety of things that we've given many grants for. We also uh, made provision for graduate fellowships for uh, graduate students who are writing a thesis or dissertation on a UFO related topic. So far we haven't had any takers on that. So if any of you know anyone who's, who's doing that, please have them get in touch with me. Uh, unfortunately in academia that's still uh, something they don't touch with a 10-foot pole. And, uh, we want to encourage people to do that, but if you, if you ever expect to get yeah, tenure in academia, you don't want your, your dissertation topic to be UFO related, unfortunately. Anyway, that was his purpose. He also liked to bring, as many of you remember, loved to bring in international speakers to, the, to this conference, and so he provided some money to be used for that. And uh, finally, he wanted to recognize or Give credit to people who have who made unusual contributions to UFOLOGY, to UFO research or education, and set aside $1,000 a year for a, an award to some person. And basically, the way we pick this person is we have a, have a list of 60 or 70, what I call them, friends of the loop, email list. Some of you are on it, probably. People who cared enough about him to write him a message while he was in hospice or was that I knew he corresponded with regularly. And we get suggestions from them and, and narrow it down to one person each year. The uh, past two, the first two recipients were Linda Bolton Howe and Richard Dolan, and both of them are speakers this year. Uh, Linda and Richard, are you in the audience? Uh, not yet, okay. Anyway, uh, we're about to announce the third recipient. Uh, this year's recipient has many similarities to Lou. It's surprising as I started researching. Uh, had a lifelong interest, or nearly lifelong interest in UFOs. 
dedicated most of his adult life to research UFOs. Uh, never married or had children. Uh, he, he saw a need to collect high quality uh, UFO reports and make them available to the public in as accurate a way as possible. And he did that through both the UFO news clipping service and also through the conference. Uh, so those were things that he uh, dedicated most of his life to. And our, this year's recipient also has done that. Um, he supported his own, like Lou, has supported uh, his work mostly from his own pocket. And I'm pleased to announce this year's recipient, uh, Peter Davenport. He does the Uh, 
uh, founded and sold a Seattle-based biotechnology company, was candidate for uh, the Washington legislature and also the U.S. Congress. One of the things that I really wanted to say was that, that in addition to the scientific value of all these sightings, one of the, to me, almost equally important is the uh, service you provide to people who are afraid to talk about UFOs, especially in small towns. Uh, we had a, a, an evangelist a few years ago who was almost ran for president who said that anyone who believed in UFOs should be stoned to death. Uh, if, if you live in a small town with that kind of mentality that UFOs are the work of the devil or whatever, or if you're afraid of losing your job or even afraid of not getting a promotion, uh, frequently there is no one you can talk to except calling Peter down for it. So that providing a psychologically safe place for people all over the country, maybe all over the world, to report a UFO sighting to me is, is almost one of the most important reasons for this award. So thanks again for the good Thank you. Thank you.